to develop complex system. There are various software tools for model-based system development. And oftentimes we want to collaborate between these tools. FMI helps us in this model exchange between various tools. And that is what we are going to learn today in this webinar with the help of, our, with the help of panel of our experts. I am Lakshmi from Trident InfoSol. Trident is the company which is responsible for today's webinar. Before we start, I'll just give a brief introduction on what we do. So our operation started in the year 2000 and we are known as a complete solution providers. We have existence in all the domains and we have, we have offices in all the tier one cities of India. This is the partial list of our client. This is a very partial list. We have existence in both in defense as well as corporate sector. So we come from the software department and we have solutions starting from the requirements management till verification and validation. So starting with uh, the middle is the embedded week cycle and the rightmost and the leftmost is the companies that handle them. And the middle, uh, middle section is the solutions that we have. So starting from Starting with the requirements management and traceability, Go, going forward to the system level specification, we have one UML and system L analysis. Going forward to the subsystem design, we have uh, 1D modeling and simulation tools. We have FMI connectors, Modelica based libraries. And on the FMI connectors is what today we are talking about. Going forward to the subsystem implementation, we have code development and de deployment solution with real time operating system. And with, the, and with the subsystem integration, we have testing solutions for both static as well as dynamic analysis. And also on the hardware front, we have real-time testing and simulations for hardware and loop testing. Talking about our speakers today, we have Mr. Vijay, who works as a design and application engineer at Trident InfoSol, who has uh, three plus uh, years experience in modeling and simulation field. We have Mr. Madan, who works as a simulation engineer at Modelon, who also works with Modelon for 1D Modelica platform. And we also have Mr. Heyman, who is a software developer from Modelon. He's one of the core developers for FMI tool, toolboxes. So to start the session, Vijay will take over the session. Thanks, Lakshmi, for the nice introduction. So today in this webinar, we are going to explore about the FMI technology, and the presentation includes the questions such as what is FMI, why FMI is useful in industry, what are the interoperability options, types of FMI, how the FMI is composed of. In the second part, Mr. Madan from the model on present about the FMIT toolbox for MATLAB and Simulic tool, and he will explain about, I mean, he will also follow with the demonstration of the FMI export and import between the tools. In the final part, I will continue the presentation about the FMI version, future aspects, and the interesting studies of FMI and supporting tools of FMI. And after that, finally, we will have a QA and a session in the final. Yeah, model-based approach to a system engineering has become more and more important when developing a complex multi-system domain. So, the model-based system engineering covers the performance of system architecture studies, implementation of the equation to build the system model and design its optimization. Then determine the system boundary conditions for defining the models and perform the order reduction, linearization, calibration, and finally and verify, verify and validate the model through hardware in loop simulations or similar. So FMI can play an important role across the tools to integrate and develop uh, the models between the different tools. Here in the V-shaped diagram, we can see the different level of the product development. The left hand deals with the model building in various levels from the system to component level. Different tools can be used for building the models, such as like Abacus, ANSYS, Diamola, MATLAB, Simulink, uh, and more. And in the right hand side, we can see about the verification and validation. 
So, and in the right hand side, we can see in a verification and validation of the build models through the hardware loop simulation and our similar testing platforms. So, in the industry, it is necessary that the different tools should be used to, and the transfer of models between the tools should be in an easy and in a simple manner. And it can be achieved through uh, a technology called FMI. So, what is FMI? FMI acts as a tool to exchange the dynamic models for co simulation and it has an independent standard. Actually, the FMI was first initiated and structured by Daimler and it named the project as Modelizer. Their main goal is to support an exchange of simulation model between the OEMs and the suppliers. Later, later the FMI technology has improved a lot by the research institutes and the opposition and the options of the field uh, and the options and features of the FMI were increased, uh, has been increased a lot in these years. As explained in the previous slide, the industry, one of the main challenges are there are different suppliers or teams to develop a components or subsystems and integration of models by OEM. Also, we can't force to choose one tool for developing for all the components and all, all for the simulation analysis. So there will be in a different tools and it should have a freedom of choosing using a different tools for the better product development. So the solution to the problem should include the reusability of the models and the coupling of the tools for the system level simulation. Importantly, the details of the model should be protected and using the FMI technology, all these solutions can be attained with the less effort. The additional advantages of the FMI are the validation of the design can be done at earlier with the simplified workflow and it will increase the overall efficiency. So the FMI helps the virtual integration for the different kind of platform such as an exchange of model between a 3D simulation and 1D simulation, flat model and controller models, and subsystem models, including within a state check models. So notably, when the cross tool between a Modelica platform, which is a 1D simulation, within a CFD or FEM simulation, the quality of the data change, its quality of the data exchange, it is whole and it's best for others, and it's a place to the uh, uh, co-simulation. Uh, FMI act as a standard interface for model exchange for the different modeling and simulation environment. This interface is achieved through a component called FMU or a functional mockup unit. So the component FMU is a representation of the model and the models are defined by the C code. So the FMU is made up of a C code and the set of C functions are there for equation evaluation and the model interface. So the details of the model is described by the XML file and it defines a variable and its attributes and other static informations. So we will see about this lit we will see about this model uh, XML file and source code about in upcoming slides in detail. In overall, these files are zipped and compressed in the file extension is called as .fmu. So to further go about the de design of a uh, comp uh, composition of the fmu, we will first see about the types of fmi. So basically there are two types of FMI, one is called model exchange, another one is called co-simulation. The differences between model exchange and co-simulation is like in the model exchange, it contains the details of only about the models, whereas in the co-simulation, it contains the details of both the models and the solver. Now we will see in detail about model exchange. As I mentioned in the above slide, the FMI as a model exchange contains only the details of the dynamic model. And it is in a C code and in the form of IO block. These blocks can take inputs from other simulation environment and the equations are resolved by the solver, which is in other simulation environment and gives the calculated outputs. The model exchange FMU described the dynamic model by our ordinary differential equation, uh, discrete, uh, differential algebraic equation and some discrete equations with the time states and the step events. Any large systems or system can be composed of any large system or a system can be composed by this FMU and it can handle more than uh, uh, can handle thousands of variables. FMU can also be used for software in loop, model in loop, uh, hardware in loop simulation and can also be used in the embedded platform too. In general, knowing about the model will help to simulate the FMU in a better way. way and these informations are primarily available in the model description file. So the model exchange FMU mathematically described uh, modeled in the like, like the equation here uh, with a set of internal algebraic equation and a set of dynamic states. The model contains vector of states, vector of parameters, vector of inputs, and vector of outputs and time. In the diagram, we can see the red arrow shows the information into the FMU, and the blue uh, show the blue arrow shows the information out from the FMU. 
So the inputs, initialization values, continuous time stage values are flow into the FMU and the outputs are calculated like local variables are flow out from the FMU. Also in the diagram, we can see the solvers. Also in the diagram, we can see the solver is separate from the FMU and the simulation time can be passed from the solver to FMU. Furthermore, the continuous time stage flow from the from solver to FMU and the derivative time stage pass it to solver from the FMU. Also, the model exchange can handle the signal even too. Next, we will see about the co-simulation. As I mentioned, the co-simulation, as I mentioned earlier, the co-simulation FMU contains the details of both model and solver. So the intention is to couple two or more simulation tool in a co-simulation environment. It supports from simple to detailed algorithm, including variable, step size, and constant step size, especially for the platform sample system or real-time simulation. The data exchange between the data exchange between a subsystem is restricted to discrete communication points in the time between the two communication points. The subsystems are solved independently from each other by their individual solver. The master algorithm controls the data exchange between the subsystem through a discrete communication point and the synchronization of all simulation solvers. The data exchange between the subsystems are controlled by a communication layer which, impl in which implemented by a unique uh, wrapper is called FMI wrapper. Also, the core simulation supports for the uh, heterogeneous, uh, uh, large heterogeneous systems, also supports uh, parallelization, parallel simulation is possible, also supports multi-rate integration, also it supports hardware in loop simulations. So the core simulation FMU mathematically model like the equation here, the function of vector of inputs, parameters and simulation time and the time steps. In the diagram, we can see the solver is enclosed we can see the solver is enclosed with the F model and the information flow into the FMU are only the inputs and the initialization values and the information flow out from the FMU are output as calculate and calculate variables. Here in the score simulation FMU, the states are handled internally. So next we will see in detail about the FMI distribution. Uh, and FMU consists of several files on the and the FMU implementation may be distributed in source code and are in a binary format. The implementation must either implement all the functions of FMI for model exchange or all the functions for the co-simulations or both. So the distribution of FMI is shown in the diagram and structured in this way. There might be in a, a folders, three folder, which are the sources, binaries, and the documentation. And, other, and another important file is a model description file. So the model description file contains the definition of all exposed variables in the FMU and other static information. Inside the source folder, the, the all needed model equations are assessed to post simulation tools such as solver details are provided with a small set of e, EC2 ESC functions. Inside the binary folder, a, a .dll file or .so file will be available for the Windows and Linux platform. It is possible to generate binaries for 32-bit and 64-bit architecture. Further, data can be included in the FMU zip file, such as a model icon picture, uh, the documentation files and inputs required for the FMU, and the tables and other needed things needed by the FMU. So in the diagram in the left side shows in a detail of the models, variable, parameters, and other static information and in the model description file, and how this model description, how this model description file is structured. Whereas the definition of unit, the definition of variable data types, the data attributes, the, and of the attributes of the variable such as the causal details and the dependency information of the variable are defined here in this XML file. So the XML file contains the definition of variable of the FMU that are exposed to the environment in which the FMU shall be used, as well as for other, mod other model information. The example of an XML file is shown in the right hand side of this. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, the FMI is a made up of a C code, and if the C code, source code includes the FMI, then all the necessary C files will be present inside the source folder. The intention is to support the platform that are not known in advance, such as hardware in loop or real-time simulation platform, or in the microcontroller platform, where the source-based distribution might require and can be utilized through a manual interaction of the C code. 
Typically for the cases like unknown platform, the complete source code in C language is provided. Also one source, one C source file includes all other needed C file with an hash include directive. It act, it act as a wrapper file and it is named as the file as all.c. So the all.c file is needed to compile all FMU source code as one unit, which in turn is required because because the demand that all internal function and symbols need to be static and able to combine several source code FMUs. Also, from the simple C program, it is execute through the execute function, it, it can create in a common interface to inter interfacing with the FMU model, FMU blocks. So the picture shows the shows the workflow of the FMA function mockup interface. So consider like an uh, a model exchange FMU and it contains an XML file for contains XML file for the model description and the binary files for the FMI APIs. The details of the model and variables can be identified before importing the FMU to the simulation tool. For example, when the FMU is imported to the simulation tool, other simulation tool, then through the user interface option from the tool, the user can read the variable details and possible to give inputs and change the parameter values. So the FMI through the DLL file, it communicate with the solver under the in the simulation, the simulation tool and resolve the unknown variables for the FMI. So this uh, picture overall de depicts the simplified workflow of the FMI. So now I will uh, the next the pr presentation and followed by the demonstration is is presented by Madan. Over to you, Madan. Thanks, Vijay, for the detailed explanation of FMI technology. So I will just share my screen. Yeah. I'm just looking into. So yeah, so yeah, as I said uh, here uh, regarding this FMA toolbox, uh, so I'm going to present what are the uh, key features in FMA toolbox and wh what what is this technology is meant for and what purpose we have built this technology. So FMA toolbox is a collaborative work which we did with MatWorks and it is completely for FMA technology in MATLAB and for Simulink interface. The key main key features of FMI uh, toolbox is that uh, both importing an FMU and exporting FMU can be done in Simulink. Uh, FMI toolbox is also providing some graphical interface for model configuration. And uh, if we have some MATLAB scripts uh, in our uh, MATLAB and we want to import as an FMU, so those uh, user interface is also available through FMI toolbox. And uh, we support both versions like FMI 1.0 and 2.0. Both versions are also supported in FMA toolbox. Uh, yeah, this is, is these are the some uh, development sectors where FMA toolbox are mainly used for uh, control system developments, uh, system integration for virtual prototyping, for designing and sizing of optimizing your plant model or your controller, uh, uh, different platforms like M MIL, SIL, HIL for validation and verification testing. Uh, we use FMA toolbox in Simulink through FMU concept. And also, uh, as I said, the key feature in FMA toolbox is an FMI coder where uh, we are enabling the user to export FMU from Simulink and also we can import FMU into Simulink. And uh, other additional key features or main features uh, uh, which are available in FMUs are uh, while importing, we have a, a GUI interface where if a a uh, user they want to set a parameter for an FMU or they want to get some parameters or uh, get from variables as an output after the simulation has been completed. All those setups can be done. Uh, in demo session, I will also show you how it is being done. And uh, some other additional informations like uh, uh, inputs and outputs of FMUs can also, also be manageable using uh, FMA toolbox interface. 
obviously the, we can automate the fma toolbox uh, uh, using uh, scripts we have uh, apis available in fma toolbox where uh, through matlab scripting we can do all those uh, apis call of functions and uh, in matlab we can uh, simulate uh, an fmu or set a variable or a set a parameter for an fmu and also we can get an fmus we also uh, support uh, uh, different solvers which are available in Mat matlab uh, like ode solvers or uh, fixed step solvers or variable step solvers uh, uh, the solvers which are available in simlink uh, using fma connectors we support those platforms also and uh, when it comes to fmu uh, export uh, there are some uh, key features we are also support like uh, in FMI toolbox, once the FMU has been exported, we can use that FMU in uh, different platforms like uh, real-time simulation in these space 1006 platforms or in uh, some HL testing platforms. We can export as a source code FMU so that we can use in these uh, additional platforms. And also there are different targets can also be selected while exporting as an FMU, whether it's in C code a target or whether it's an S function target or compatible targets which are available for FMU source like FMU 1.0 version of ME or CS or 2.0 version. Everything is available while exporting as an FMU from Simulink. So here in demonstration, we just split it into two uh, sectors. One is uh, uh, one use case is when uh, we will try to build a controller uh, controller with battery in a Dymola and we will try to export a plant model from Dymola and um, try to build a controller uh, in Simulink with the uh, exporter plant model as an FMU in Simulink platform. That is one section and second section will be a vice versa one. We will try to build a controller model in Simulink and we will export as an uh, FMU and we will use that uh, controller in Dymola's plant, plant model. Yeah, I will just move on to this. So yeah. So this is the uh, Dymola interface I'm currently using. So uh, I intend to show how FMA technology can be used for collaborative product development. I have a hypothetical scenario here where an engineer puts together a model, an electrical propulsion system consisting of a battery, uh, a motor, it's an electrical motor and a charger. So this will represent uh, electrical propulsion system and the system can be used for quite different systems. We can hook up this up with chassis that access the mechanical load for range estimation or for sizing components, setting requirements on thermal management and so on. So my demo mo monoscript actually goes through how to set up these uh, in the Dymola interface. But for time being, I already created these setups. I will, I will just explain uh, those steps. So I have taken up a duplicated model from model on electrification library. So in model on electrification library batteries examples, we have a lot of additional batteries in that I have taken a lumped back model battery as an example for this demo. So here I did some uh, property changes in a parameters like uh, I size under the package battery package structure uh, and also I have set up a controller uh, as a fixed limit from no limit. So this controller part will be uh, handled in Simulink side also uh, by building a controller in Simulink and uh, exporting how it results have been changed. So then I created my own electric propulsion system with my battery pack and an example available in uh, electrification library, a machine model, and also an another example called battery charge, which is available in electrification library. It was just a matter of next. It was just a matter of connecting these uh, uh, electrical plugs and also some bus connectors for the controller section. We simulate this charging of battery uh, the actual motor is in use uh, in this use case. The controller set in the fixed limit to uh, uh, charge, which should charge the battery with the constant current flowing into the battery. This we are going to test it for one hour, 3600 seconds. I also set up a state of charge for battery as 20 percentage. So I'll just try to run this model uh, for an hour. 3600 seconds 
and uh, which uh, variable step solver yeah model has been ran now I uh, will just plot some interesting variables like uh, package SOC so here if you see the package SOC it is uh, varying from uh, 20 percentage to uh, sorry 0.2 percentage to 0.3 since it's a big uh, size pad battery pack it is taking uh, only uh, 30 uh, percentage SOC charge and another interesting variable is on pack temperature so if you see the initial temperature it is 20 degrees and it is suddenly increasing to 60 degrees which is very high so in this scenario uh, we will try to export and plan model as an fmu so we can develop a controller in a simulink instead that will con control the charging limits so that the battery doesn't get too hot to do that i need to do some preparations like uh, i already did that so if you see uh, in electrification library battery pack we have some uh, available controller templates here in templates i have used this limit template i extend this limit template which consists of this limit components and these uh, control bus for controlling the uh, uh, inputs and outputs and also some uh, internal battery connections so uh, remaining these real inputs and outputs i uh, i want to extract uh, uh, give inputs for this particular component so i have taken uh, uh, signals as an input using real input components and also uh, i want some outputs to be given as a feedback to my controller so i have taken as an output and for my study so this controller, I will uh, just integrate it with my battery, which I also done it. So this is the controller. So if you go inside this component, you can see the build controller, which we did. And uh, I just extended these uh, real inputs and outputs so that if I create as an FMU, I will uh, able to see these real inputs and outputs in my FMU block. So my plant model will be look like like this and uh, i will just try to export this uh, plant model as an mefmu so fmu options model exchange version 2.0 uh, yeah remaining things as i'm going for a default one so i will try to compile it model is getting compiled so yeah in meanwhile i will also uh, show you how to set up a uh, FMA toolbox in a MATLAB. So once the FMA toolbox has been installed in your system, uh, you can just set a path uh, of the installation directory, uh, which I already did. Once you save these uh, contents in your uh, Mat MATLAB, then if you go to Simulink library browser, you will have this additional option called FMA, where uh, two blocks for one is for CS, one is for ME blocks will be available. Yeah. So yes, uh, model has been get compiled. So now we will move on to Simulink side. So now I have just drag and drop this FMU ME type since we are exported as an ME FMU. So now I will again uh, reload and show you how it looks like or the, how the user interface will be. So here I will load an FMU which I have already created using Dimola the uh, fmu is getting loaded yep so here as i mentioned in my presentation uh, uh fmi toolbox is providing some user interface like if uh, i want to set some parameters for my uh, particular model uh, or a particular parameter i can do uh, that option uh, sorry yeah here i can set a value here uh, if i want to uh, export this uh, as an output if I want to uh, select some other variables if you see here the ones which I shown is already available in FMU as an outputs if I want an additional variables to be seen as my result analysis ones which I can also browse and I can add a set of scalar variables or vector variables if I want to remove I can also remove the variables and uh, here uh, these are some uh, data uh, informations available regarding fmus what type of fmu what version it is where it has been what is the 64 bit which 
tool it has been generated all the additional information will also be available here we also have some split ups like uh, how much what are the parameters how much count uh, states are there continuous states or how, what are the boolean variables will also be there here so now i just uh, loaded our plant model uh, as an input i have just given some constant limits for uh, uh, charging current and also for discharging current similarly for package uh, pack volt for maximum and minimum i have given some constant values now our interest is uh, temperature control and uh, i have added a detrating charging power and discharging power based on temperature so we are getting a, a sensed battery temperature for, as an output here and i am giving as an input since it is it will be coming as an uh, kelvin i am converting as a degree celsius then i have added up a 1d lookup table this will just normalize my power limits uh, detrating so if you see if you see inside this t high if it is uh, the input uh, temperature is colder than this t high which i have set it for 35 degrees celsius the value will be 1 if it is higher than this 45 degrees celsius then the value will be zero so yeah these are some normalization i did in this uh, 1d lookup table and uh, i have also added some signals uh, to normalize the power uh, inputs for uh, my battery so now i will just try to simulate this model so uh, for simulation i have uh, uh, I have used a stiff solver. I'm just running this model. Yeah. Yeah, it is a bit fast. So here, if you see in the result analysis, uh, I will just show you. So this is the uh, temperature. So if you in Daimler, if you noticed, uh, it will it, it, it was uh, previously it was 20 degrees Celsius and it extended till 60. But uh, due to this normalization, what we did or just using the controller, it is trying to uh, derate the temperature to something like 40 or 42 degrees Celsius. Similarly, if you uh, go for uh, some other results like uh, this is the pack voltage. Pack voltage is also uh, coming till 2.6 volt, then it is again uh, derating to uh, some constant or steady state condition and uh, the third interesting part will be uh, the state of charge so state of charge it was also previously uh, uh, 0 0.2 i'll just show you clearly previously it was 0 0.2 to 0 0.3 but now uh, it is uh, maintaining uh, something around 0 0.27 or 0 0.28 so yeah so yeah, these are the results uh, through controller. We are able to maintain our uh, the temperature using uh, our power limits. So for this hypothetical controller model, a control engineer can set up something that works with and share back with the plant developer while continuous working in refining the control systems. So similarly, uh, this is our first set of uh, demo session. So now I will just show you uh, how to export a controller model using Simulink or using FMA toolbox. Yeah, I will just. So here, uh, same similar setup what we did in our previous demo. I just created a controller with some inputs and outputs for uh, FMU convenient. Once I did my modeling side in uh, Simulink, I need to. Uh, configure some settings so if you have fma toolbox uh, coder in your site so then uh, you will have an additional option called code generation here you can select your system target files so whether it should be uh, uh, me fmu with the uh, different versions or cs fmu or if you have we have a different uh, uh, targets also like uh, s functions or if it is some c targets it is also available so in this demo i'm just going for uh, fmu cs and uh, we have also some additional sub options like uh, if you want to optimize your fmus you can also do that if your FMU should not be a source code FMU, it wants to be created as a black box FMU, then that option is also available for the user. They can check this option for black box FMU. 
if you are if you are unchecking this it will be created as a source code from you so i did it uh, i i have configured my setup now uh, in apps you have this simulink coder where uh, you have this build option now the fmu is building in background you can see uh, what how the fmu wrapping is being done or what are the additional options or additional uh, um, files are creating to build this fmu yep fmu has been built uh, here you can see in my working directory i have my fmu built and also i can see what are the source code files available inside my fmu so now uh, we will again move to uh, dimola side uh, yep now i will just try to import that fmu yep so here i will just open import fmu we yeah here uh, i'm just sorry i need to shift to this okay here i'm just importing my csfmu and i'm i'm uh, double checking whether uh, it has been selected core simulation yeah so fmu has been imported so fmu will be look like here so here you can also see the informations what is the stop time what is the simulation setup i have did in uh, simulink side now i will just try to uh, connect both uh, my plant model and control fmu so here the plant model if you see this is the uh, one which we uh, already did i'm just going to give some inputs from the controller and uh, take feedback for the controllers which i already did here these are the input connections and these are the output and it goes as a feedback for the controller so now we will try to uh, simulate this model for again uh, 3600 seconds yeah model is getting compiled now i will try to uh, delete these uh, inputs yeah model has been ran so now again we can just check uh, what is our pack temperature because uh, yeah we can also compare the old results what we have so here if you see which will give us some even more good understanding so if you see this is the old result which uh, increased till 60 degrees celsius but the control model it was able to maintain uh, till 41 degrees celsius so using controller we were able to uh, reduce or we were able to maintain the pack temperature yep so yeah that's it from my side vijay you can take over it. Thanks, Madan. That's a very great uh, demonstration with NDTEC. So we cover your uh, FMIT toolbox, Diamond Platform, and MATLAB Simulink Platform. Thanks, Madan. So we will now see about the FMI versions. So currently there are two versions. Uh, one is FMI 1.0 and uh, FMI 2.0. So the FMI 1.0 version consists of three parts, such as FMI for model exchange, FMI for uh, score simulation, FMI for PLM. And in the model exchange, it specifies the interface standard for creating dynamic models and can be exported or utilized in other simulation environment. So in the core simulation, it specifies the interface standard for coupling to or more than two simulation tools in the core simulation environment. For the platform, for the FMI for the PLM, it specific generic way to handle FMI data in PLM systems. So whereas in FMI 2.0 version, the same interface standard is, is specified for both model exchange and core simulation. In terms of future, the main differences between the FMI versions 2.1 and 1 are tunable parameters, interface improvements related to algebraic loops, and other improvements such as saving FMU state, dependency derivatives, and output to states, and, input, and inputs can be defined. 
and other directional derivatives. These are the features are improved in the FMI 2.0 versions. For FMI 3.0, preliminary feature list released from the FMI community in most in most of the commercial tools, the FMI 1.0 and 2.0 are being used and might be in the upcoming release. The commercial tool add the new version of FMI 3.0. But I'll, I will, we will explore some of the features in the FMI 3.0. So it introduces a clock for a synchronization of variables changes across FMUs and allow co-simulation with even to make it as a hybrid co-simulation environment. Also allow access to the intermediate input and output values between communication time points from the FMU to disclose relevant subsystems behavior for analysis. So our, our advanced co-simulation master algorithm for enhanced numerical stability. And another in, interesting feature is adding some more information to the model description file to improve the automatic import of source code FMUs. It also, it also allows, FM, it will also allows FMUs to communicate multi-dimensional variable and change their sizes using structural parameters. Regarding the binary type, the binary data type, it adds an opaque binary data type to FMI variable to allow, for an example, uh, for an instance, efficiently exchanging of complex sensor data. Also for the numerical variable type, adding 8, 16, 32, and 64-bit signed and unsigned integer and a single precision floating point variables to improve efficiency and the type safety for, especially for when importing exporting models for the domains such as embedded platform control software, control system platform and automotive device. Also, help the user to build a consistent system from FMUs and render the system more intuitively, like, like a more graphically user with a better representation of the structured code, such as buses and physical connectors in the model description file. So looking forward to the FMI 3.0 version, I'd like to mention about the FMI project led by the Modelica Association. Also, the development of the both the Modelica and FMI technology and both the FMI and Modelica community is in very intact. I'd like to highlight some of the alpha feature list from uh, which are uh, introduction more integer types and a 32-bit float bit type for better design of controller models and introduction of binary to binary type to support non-numeric data handling for the complex sensor and logic data interfaces. Finally, introduction of a structural uh, structural parameter that allow description of changing of arrays even during a runtime and support advanced online calibration of control code. Now, let's see some interesting study done using the FMI technology. Here, the paper from the Society of Automotive G Engineers of Japan where the complete abstract vehicle modeling and the simulation analysis completed using the FMI technology, where all the subsystems of the vehicle are developed separately and ex exported as an FMU and integrated in a one simulation platform. They have used both the model exchange and co-simulation, and especially they have tested the full vehicle test using the co-simulation FMUs. Let's see another study uh, using FMI on the health platform. So, especially for the automotive domain, for the development and testing control units in the automotive uh, in the industry, the atmosphere standard are there, which is separates application code from platform specific software. So, by using the atmosphere tools and the model exchanging via the function from via the FMI interface. So, this paper explains ab about how the bio battery management system algorithms can be validated and tested in a several abstraction layers using. FMI on a hill platform. So we have come to the final session of the, this webinar. So here there are the types of modeling and simulation platform which are supporting the FMI technology. So you can see from the pictures like the Modelica platform, CFD platform, FEM pla F CFD FEM simulation platform, coding platform, data modeling and simulation platform, and other logic state states platform. Even every kind of a modeling and simulation platform can be adopted can be adopted by this, can be adapted to this with FMI technology. So almost more than 80% of the modeling and simulation tools have this FMI feature. And these are the list of some of the tools supporting FMI and mentioning that OOS uh, supporting platform under the FMI export import options. So to more about the list on the details, to more about the list of software availability of the FMI feature and uh, under more details about this FMI technology, 
please have into this look of this uh, please have a look into this link so we are coming to the final uh, for the Q&A session so if uh, i mean uh, the moderator lakshmi will throw out the, i mean she will throw out the questions from the chat box so the, we can get the help from the hemant also to answer these questions Vijay, we have a question here which says which one provides better results me or se Vijay, anyone can answer this Which one provides better results, ME or CS? Okay, uh, yeah, maybe I can take it up. Uh, so, you see, uh, inside ME, we don't have a, a solver set up. So, uh, if you are going for some variable strip solvers uh, in ME, so uh, it is depends upon the particular platform where we are setting up. But in CS, it is not the condition. So CS, we will have an inbuilt solver which will be wrapped up from that uh, 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 so, uh, platform which we built an FMU. So uh, CS FMU with fixed strip solvers will provide us uh, exact results than ME. The ME solvers, it will vary from platform to platform because the solver, we need to make sure that whether it is uh, providing the same solver setup with exact tolerance. But uh, in CS, it is not the case. We will wrap up everything with that particular platform thing and we will try to implement in a different platform. So CS will give us better results when we compare uh, uh, platform-wise. All depends on the which type of solver you'd like to run your model. So, Hemant, the you next question, how does we choose between ME or CS? yes uh, it depends on which kind of solver you would like to run your model with so if you plan to run your model with a variable step size then we should go for uh me because we'll only deal with the fixed step solvers so uh, Heman, the next question is, while validating FMI toolbox on DS1006 processor, what was chosen, ME or CS? If ME, do you find any difference supporting DSpace executable use, using DS1006 TLC compiler? So, uh, we do not face any problems with uh, I mean, DSpace system when we are using DSpace. So Hemant, we have one more question here. Does FMI support partial differential equations? Partial differential equations. Just give me a second, I'll answer. Uh, Hemant, uh, I can answer this question. Okay, okay. Uh, thanks Hemant. Uh, actually, uh, FMI, it's like, uh, basically the FMI is divided into model exchange and co-simulation. So, in model, in, when it comes to the model exchange, like you have the mod, details of the model. So normally in the platform, like you will don't have any kind of a solver to solve those equations. So you will take into another platform to solve those uh, equations. So, but when you are really dealing with a co-simulation or the kind of an PDS or PDE models, you can make it as a co-simulated model and you can do the so you can run the simulation. But, but in general, in the FMU uh, for the model exchange, it doesn't support any, it doesn't have any kind of a solver for that solving the partial differential equation. But these questions are keep on coming up for, it's in a very interesting part also. So maybe in the upcoming releases, this uh, feature may be added, including the solver for, for the PDs in the FMU. Thanks, Vijay. Uh, Hemant and Vijay, there's one last question. Is FMI is FMU model like black box or controlling of a variable possible? 
it depends on the uh, application which we are using to export the model. With FMI toolbox, it is possible to uh, create a black box FMU where we could hide all the parameters or partially hide the information and protect the IP. Thanks, Hemant. There's one more last question. What are the license and usage condition for the FMU standard? Uh, so FMI standards are open and we can use it uh, unless we don't want to change the source code. So it is open and free. Yeah, to add more, the, to add more, uh, Mm, actually, FMI is an open source. It's developed from the open source community, so the technology is freely available. But in the commercial tool, like you have to pay for the commercial tool. But uh, you will have an in the commercial tool. You don't need any kind of an add-on feature for exporting your model as FMU. But as, as specifically mentioned by uh, Hemant, like to if you want to include some source code, then you will need some separate license for the from the commercial tool side. So I hope that answers that question. So I think uh, we have answered all the questions uh, from the chat box. So if you have any question, further questions, please write it now, or uh, you can also write it to this below me email ID, either to me or Madan. So write in there for my. So we will wait another uh, few seconds for any coming questions. Okay, so the one common question is like uh, the recording will be available or not? Like, yes, the recording will be available. Like uh, we will po we will post it to in the, our social platform and we will send it to all the registered users, uh, register our uh, attendees. So you will get that uh, complete uh, video of it, this presentation. So from our uh, Trident side, I thanks everyone for attending this uh, webinar and spend your time with us. And I want to thank uh, Madan and uh, Hemant for giving the valuable, sharing the platform here and uh, giving the valuable uh, demonstration and the, uh, sharing the questions and answers. Thanks, Madan and Hemant. Uh, thanks, Vijay. Uh, I also need to add up in this, like, uh, yeah, this is a good opportunity for us also to explore, uh, to explain about our FMI toolbox and also FMI technology. So, yeah, thanks for this uh, coordination from Trident say. Thanks. Thanks, Paul.